Hey guys, Terry with Computer Pro again. Um, doing my last review. I just did one on the grinders, the Chiato E6P version 2 versus the Sete 270WI. Um, I wanted to do those, even though they're kind of combined with my units here, I wanted to do them in a separate video um, just so it wouldn't be too too long. Um, so the Chiato's going with the Profitech Pro 600 and the Brutus is actually getting returned for this. At, along with the Sete 270 WI. So um, to, to see why on the grinders, I'll, I'll post a link, see the grinder video. It, it explains that more in depth. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna concentrate more on the machines. Um, so they're very similar in that they're, they're both E61 groups, dual boilers, um, got them from Whole Lotte Love, which is an awesome place to, to get espresso equipment from. They've got a really, really good website with a how-to section and uh, you know instant chat help and all kind of stuff so I, I highly recommend them um, at any rate the I, I've tried uh, which I'll post a link to a different video um, a couple super automatics that's what got me into this I, I started with the Gaja Brera which was I think we got off Amazon and it, it was nice but the espresso tasted weak and then we went to a to a refurbished Gaja Babila, uh, Babila, 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 I think it's called, um, which is their highest end super automatic. And it's, it was better than the Brera, but it was still pretty weak. It didn't taste like a shot, an espresso shot from a coffee house. It had that thinness to it. It's hard to explain, but um, then I actually got into a Breville Oracle, which was kind of in between these types of machines and the super automatics and that it did some things for you but some of it was manual and it had to it basically it tasted like it was in between two i think these produce the best tasting shot um by by far uh but they require the most work they're more of a manual machine of course um so the similarities obviously you can you know, if I step back a little bit, you can see they're they're very similar. They both have, like I said, the E61 group head, which is a classic design. Um, I believe that includes, or the, the purpose of this is there's there's a channel in here that the hot water runs through to keep the group head hot. So like both of these units are turned on. This group head is is very hot. Like you can't hold this. It's very, very, very hot. Um, and if you leave the porter filter in, then it heats up the porter filter, which is extremely hot. So you you want it to be at that temp when you pull your shot. You don't want your espresso shot hitting something very cold. Otherwise, it's going to change and it's not going to turn out right. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> the they are similar, being both dual boiler machines, E61 groups, um, hot water, steam, all that's the same. The, the differences and the, the thing that even got me going on this path and, and wanting to trade up was that the we got the Brutus and I would say it's the best and the most affordable, really good quality dual boiler system out there. Now there's the Breville uh, dual boiler, which is has a legendary following, right? Um, it's not an E61 group. It's its, its own thing. There's more plastic, but people love them, you know, and that's even cheaper yet. Um, but in terms of what I call the Italian style, you know, this type of unit, this is going to be one of the cheapest dual boilers that you can get. It's, it's priced actually with higher end uh, heat exchanger machines. So it's a, it's a pretty good, good deal. Um, the thing I didn't like about it was for whatever reason, this unit had a very bad plastic smell. I think it's getting a little better, but I had to move some some plastic hose over and and zip tie it up and and you know per technical support they they had me do that. Um, the water, both water filters or water containers reservoirs are inside here. Um, you probably can't see up there the the Profitex in here. The it's the Profitech water reservoir is a little bit thicker. The plastic looks to be a little bit better grade. Um, I have no proof of what they're made out of. You know, they, I don't know that one's better than the other, but it feels more sturdy. Um, the other thing is the, when they talk about the fit and finish of a, of a Profitech machine, it is true that 
the the finish and the fit and the the weld the uh, welding how it's done the corners are much 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 nicer on this machine. I mean everything is machined quite a bit better than on the Brutus. Okay, so obviously they're you know and this is a less expensive unit, so they have to cut somewhere. So it's still a great unit. And if you have a fixed budget and you can't go over that, I wouldn't hesitate to get this in a heartbeat. Um, but these are the reasons why, or the pros, I guess, of the Profitech Pro 600. Um, these have copper boilers. The Profitech has stainless steel boilers. Now, there's some controversy there, of course, if you go online. I think stainless steel just doesn't have that that metallic taste, and it's I, it seems to be the way all the high-end machines are going. So I think there's there's a benefit to stainless steel. Um, it also has the, the there's a mushroom valve they call it that that's what this nut is. It goes in here. This is a one piece design. This is two. This mushroom valve, which also is subject to corrosion and so forth, is stainless steel, which is really nice. So the internals are a little bit better. And I'm not going to do it for this video, but if you took the took the the sides off and actually looked inside the unit, um, these are just like engineered very, very, very nice. The the Profitex, everything's all the cabling is lined up, you know, in place of like some plastic hose, you'll have stainless steel braided hose. It's just a really nice made machine. I think they're made in Italy, engineered in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, but um, they both have PIDs. So the, this PID is only for the coffee boiler. So in a dual boiler, you have one boiler for, for the brew, the brew boiler or the coffee, and one for the steam, the hot water slash steam. Um, the, the, what, what a PID does is it allows you to set the temperature of that boiler. So if we set the coffee boiler for 200, so we know it's consistent, we're going to get roughly 200 degree water out. Um, the steam requires, you can't make steam with 200 degrees, so it requires more of a, you know, 250, 260 degree temp. Um, this PID is only for the brew. In order to change the steam pressure, you have to, I believe, get inside the, the unit. It can be done, but the adjustment is in the unit. This here on the Profitech Pro 600, these PIDs, or this single PID, can be set to adjust both. So this PID can be set for the coffee or brew temperature and also the uh, the pressure. And the pressure on this, there's there's only, out of the Profitech line, the Pro 600, the Pro 700, and the ECM, which is, I guess, a sister type of thing. Uh, they're the Synchronic, uh, Synchronica, Synchronica, which is the top of the line unit, um, have a new deal where they reach two, two bars of pressure, which is a lot of steam. I have this one set for 267. I could crank it up to 270. So my steam, if you can see it, I could set it to where it goes up to two bars. I have it on, it's about 1.6, 1.7 or so. Um, actually just cranked up a tiny bit, but it, it's hovering between there. I don't, you know, I'm coming from this guy, which doesn't, the, the pressure on the steam boiler right now is between one and 1 1.5. And this is between 1.5 and two. So I don't want to go to two yet because that's a lot of pressure and steam. And when you froth milk, I'm, I'm not that good at it yet. So I'm trying to, uh, kind of smooth into it. Um, the other differences are this has traditional steam arms, which they kind of come out the bottom and th this looks very familiar. They're angled out the front. They're angled so you can put your milk, uh, pitcher in there. Um, kind of the same with the hot, hot water on the Profitech. They have a new design where they come out the side and it's kind of, there's, there's one thing I don't like about it, but it's just a, a quirk that deals with my personal, set up with my sink being right here and so forth. Um, but the reason that they do this is because, so once again, this is a, this is an insulated, um, steam wand and I believe an insulated hot water wand. This has an insulated steam wand. The hot water wand does not appear to be insulated. If you run hot water through it and you touch it, it's going to be warm. Okay. So for the record, run hot water and it's 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 hot so by that 
I'm the way this goes over anytime. Well, yeah, it's very hot. Whenever you operate at uh, E61 Brew Group, you basically lift this lever, right? And that's what pulls your shot, okay? So with the super hot water, depending on what kind of drinks you're making, I've had times where I've went to lift it and my skin hit this and it does, it burns. It, it's very, very, very hot. So what they did with the Profit Tech is they made the arms come out the side, especially this side, it keeps it out of the way. So I have access to this lever and I'm far enough away from the hot water wand. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It looks like a guy standing there with his arms hanging out, right? It's kind of funny looking almost, but I, I do like it. Um, the thing, and this is just a general quirk with my setup because my sink is right here. I do miss, so this is a single hole tip because the pressure is not super great on it. Um, it's easy to control. This has a two hole tip, which you can get a four hole tip. The, the more holes you have, the faster it steams because the more steam comes out, but the more you have to be good at doing that at frothing and steaming because it's you don't have less you know this is more forgiving i guess um but because of this angle you see how i can angle it out to the side so if this machine because this is where i keep it next to my sink if this machine is here i can blast this right into the sink so normally there's condensation or water that builds up in the line so you have to flush it first so the little flush before the steam comes out i could just do everything right right in the sink, which was very handy. The way these are designed, how they kind of curve back, that's as far as it goes, okay? So it doesn't really, and it's a two-hole tip, which means that if I do this steam, I'm gonna put this over here, you can see it come out in two different places, okay? So, you know, not the end of the world, it's kind of cool to be able to do everything in the sink, but this is a much better performing unit, so. It's just a personal quirk. Um, the other differences uh, as far as, so this has actually a larger, well, before I do that, you can really tell, I don't know what the camera, if I can get in here, the fit and finish I was talking about. It's kind of tinny and you can kind of see the edges. Just, it isn't bad at all, but this here is just like machine so nice. It's very, very, very clean and nice. Um, this isn't the, neither one of these are plumbable. Well, no, this is the vibration pump only, pump only. None of them are plumbable. The plumbable one on this sits up a little higher, but you can see the feet maybe on this one are just little, little rubber pegs. Okay. Um, this has actual kind of cool looking little chrome feet on it, which raise it up a little bit so you can clean underneath it, which I like better. Um, the, the drip tray on the, see if I can get this out. is bigger on the Brutus. This is a big, big, huge drip tray, okay? Um, on the Profit Tech, it's just, it's a little chintzier how it goes in, but it goes in and it stays, you know? On the Profit Tech, the whole thing just comes out. It's got nice guards so you don't scratch the side. Underneath here, it's got a, a blank, uh, uh, blank basket to do your back flushes and so forth. It's got a hole here that you can store a second tip if you had a four hole tip. Um, this does come off like this. And as you can see, it's not quite as big. Um, I don't know if I'd view that as a negative because to be honest with you, I don't let my water build up that much. Like that's a lot of yucky water to keep in there if you're gonna take advantage of a tank that size. So, you know, after I only have coffees usually two a day or so, maybe three. And when I'm done, I'll just empty it in the sink and rinse it out right there. So that never gets a chance to build up, okay? Um, so I don't know if that's a con, but the tank is a little bit bigger on the Brutus. On the Profit Tech, it, there's something, it's not a magnet, but there's something that makes it click into place. And it drops a little bit right there. You can kind of hear that it... It sinks right in and it's solid, okay? So, um, let's see, what else are, oh, the, the valves are different. So this is, there's, what I really wanted was joysticks, which you can probably get an upgrade on this um, because with a joystick, it's just flip on and tap it off. 
These are traditional valves, I believe, and these are what they call uh, sprung valves, which means you don't have to tighten them down. Um, th there's a spring in the mechanism, and they're they're more not powered, but it's a it's a it's a better quality valve. Um, it looks beefier too. The handles feel better, and so forth. This it seems like you have a lot of turns to turn off, and the, the the reason why joysticks would be cool, and these seem to be working great, is because when you have a little knob that you have to turn. Okay, it doesn't seem like much, but when you're frothing milk, and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're kind of doing it by feel. So when when the pitcher gets hot, milk gets up there. You don't. I like it about 140. That's where it gets sweet. When I do almond milk, and you don't want to scald it because it'll taste horrible, right? So the problem is, it it takes a while to get up there. Once it starts getting up, you know, 135, 138, 140, 140, then it starts going really quick, you know, 140, 145, 150. So once I feel that the temp's ready and, you know, this is cranked over, by the time I feel like I'm turning this forever and it's still heating up, you don't really want to pull this out because you're going to spray milk all over the place, right? So you're just cranking it and I think it adds a couple degrees. So you have to get you have to factor that in. Joysticks would be cool because you just slap the joystick off, right? So it's on, and when you're done, just flip it up. So that's really cool. A sprung valve is kind of, there's this loose point where it doesn't do anything, and then once it does, it's kind of a, a quicker, like there's not as much turns. So it's, I think it's gonna be easier. So maybe I won't, I won't need the joysticks. I've been kind of, kind of wanting to do that upgrade, but I, it might be a mute point um, with this unit. So I'm, I'm gonna pull a shot on both real quick and just show you. Um, oh, the other thing is important to me, I'm kind of a beginner with this, is the shot timer. So, oh, so how this display works, okay? This display in the Brutus just reads out the uh, brew temperature and you can change it with the up and down button and that's all it reads out, right? This display here, this PID, you see how there is 26.7 and now it's 2.01. All the point does is signify which boiler it's talking about. So if if the dot's over here, and you can tell by the by the higher temp, but if it's the leftmost dot, that's the brew temperature, so it's at 200. If it's if it's the rightmost dot, that's the boiler or the steam temperature. And that is, and it just alternates. So it's telling me that the brew is set for 200, which I can change, and the steam is set for 267, which I think I can go up to 272, which gives you your two bars of that's that's a ton of steam. So um, and the the other thing, the the really cool thing that I love about it is it functions as a shot timer. So once I lift this brew group, watch the watch the PID here. Once I lift this. It functions as a timer and it stops automatically. So three seconds of brew basically, right? So that's very, very, very handy. And why would that be extremely handy? Um, oh, it, what I did on this one is I attached a magnetic timer. This is just a, a timer. To, it kind of does the same thing. Start, I stop it and then I have to reset it. Um, and I, it's a magnet that sticks. The problem with that is you have to pretty much kind of when you lift it you gotta hope your timing's right and start it at the same time and stop it so not as convenient i definitely like the built-in system that's a lot easier um and why a timer is important is that's what tells you all your that's your your main parameters when you make espresso you need to have your your the the variable that you're going to be changing is going to be your your grinder settings, okay? So you're gonna either grind coarser or finer because what you're looking for is you're gonna pull a shot in between, you know, six, 10 seconds or so, it'll start coming out. And once it's done, it'll fill up uh, two ounces, which is like a double shot, two ounces in uh, 20 to 30 seconds. So if you just average at 25, right? Um, if you're getting, if 30 seconds passes and you're nowhere near two ounces, and by the time you hit two ounces, you got 40 seconds on there, then you ground way too fine because the, there's the, the water can't get through. Everything's too fine and you tamp it and it, it's, it's, it's not porous enough. So 
it's and then that leads to uh, that would be under extracted, I believe, because it's not coming out enough. I, I get confused about that. One's under extracted, one's over extracted. But if you if you grind too coarse and say you're on 25 seconds, you may be, or, or once you get to two ounces, it, it may only be 15 seconds. So if you're getting to, to two ounces in 15 seconds, your, your grind is too coarse. And that's going to lead to, uh, that, that I believe is under extracted. So what, one is going to taste really sour and weak and watery, and one's going to taste bitter and ashy. So they're kind of opposite ends of the, of the uh, spectrum there. And what you're doing with your, your, your grind settings is you're constantly monitoring that time to, to see, okay, I got my, my, my two ounce shot or double shot and I'm on 23 seconds. Okay, good. Now, some people might like it a little more, you know, 28 seconds or so, but as long as you're between 20 and 30, I think your, your shot's going to be proper. And then it just depends whether you like it a little sweeter or a little more bitter and so forth. Um, but if you fall outside that range, then it's they usually don't taste very, very good. So the shot clock or the timer is extremely important, which is why I bought this one to put on here. So the fact that this is built in is very, very, very cool, very, very handy. Um, so let's pull a shot on each really quick. I'm going to, oh, I have it on a, I don't know if you can see it back there, a smart plug, because these guys take, this heats up quicker because the boilers are smaller. So that's kind of a plus is it, it gets ready quicker, but you got to plan on at least 30 minutes or so, which is a lot. It's not like an old coffee pot where, you know, four minutes later, your, your coffee's ready. You want to get these guys because this will probably be ready to go in 10 minutes or so, right? But the group head is not going to be up to temp. So even though your temperatures will probably read right and everything's set, if you pull a shot, it's probably not going to be correct because it's now it's going through cold metal and it's going to cool it down. So it might taste sour or a little bit funny. So to, to have everything, because the thing with E61 groups is they're, they're very stable. They're, once this heats up, this is a big chunk of brass. It's like chrome or nickel plated brass or something. And it's, it gets very hot. And if you turn the machine off and you, know, you go by two hours later, and still, it's still going to be very, very warm. So this is a giant mass of metal. Um, a copper, brass, something that retains heat. So to get this fully up to temp, it's going to be, some people say, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So <clears throat> what I did is I, I got a timer, and I can do it on my phone. I can usually, this one's hooked up to it. So if you go over here, if she'll hear me, Alexa, turn off the coffee pot. And boom, it's off, see? So it's just a voice-activated Alexa, turn on the coffee pot. And it's back on. So that's pretty handy. I can do it whether I'm at home, whether I'm not at home. Um, I can whip out my cell phone and turn this on and off from anywhere in the world. So that's very cool. That's the one thing I did not like about the Breville Oracle, which is an awesome machine, but it has a momentary power button that's not a hard switch like this. This is just on or off. The same as this. It's a hard switch. It's on, on or off. So you, I, I leave it on, and then I turn it off by the Wi-Fi switch, and it works really, really good. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna pull a shot on each. I'm, I am gonna turn this one off though because I believe we have 15 amp power in the kitchen, and these, this draws 1400. Um, uh, uh, I get watts and amps mixed up, but the the, the draw, the rating on this is uh, 1,400 watts. So, and I believe this one is maybe like 1,200. So that's a lot to put. So running them both, I don't want like the pump to kick on while I'm pulling a shot. So I'm going to temporarily turn this one off, and I'm going to pull a quick shot on this guy here. Distribution tool. And I'm going to do the no no and tamp on the cupboard just for demonstration purposes. 
why did I do this? I meant to do it inside this one. That was kind of dumb. I'm not going to taste it, so I guess it doesn't matter. But Okay. So on the Brutus, I have to make sure that I hit my start and that's zeroed out and it's all set to go. Whoops. Okay, now you can pre-infuse these a little bit. If you turn it up, you can kind of hear it. You're not going all the way to engage the pump, but there's a little water that's going in it. I don't know what the pressure is, but that's how you pre-infuse the E61 group. And ready, I'm gonna start now. So we started coming out really late. And this is a different grind that I've been using with this because I'm using the Chiado and I was using the Sete with, with this before. But you see my two ounce mark? So this is what I'm talking about. This is coming out, I'm gonna stop it at 30 seconds. So I got, it's, it's close, okay? It's close. It's a lot of crumb, a good looking shot. But you see I'm a little short on the, I'm under two ounces and I'm already at 30 seconds. Um, it's still going, so. Now if I taste it. Yeah, little, I'm already fully caffeinated today, so I'm, I'm gonna dump these. Cause I really can't have any more caffeine. <clears throat> and that could have been because of I actually used the wrong porter filter. This was the heated porter filter. I don't think the, the time had anything to do, to do with that though, so. What I'm gonna do is pull a shot on the, clean up a little bit here, pull a shot on the Pro 600. Wipe out the basket a little bit. This is a, a naked basket, as they call it, meaning it doesn't have a spout on the bottom. We've got to turn this guy back on. Alexa, turn on the coffee pot. Forgot about that. So it should get up to temperature really, really quick. Oops. I turned it off. With my switch, that's the thing. If you if you physically turn it off, then you're not going to be able to get it on with your Wi-Fi switch. But this should get up to temp really, really quick here. So while that's climbing up, <clears throat> that that needs to get to 200 or 199. Um, and if it starts taking too many minutes, I'll I'll cut the. Oh, it's already there. Two sixty-seven. So it's back up to temp already. It, it was only off for a couple minutes. So we'll pull this shot and see how we how we get. Okay, a little pre-infuse. I'll try to get the camera here because sometimes the naked porter filters are pretty cool, but I can't guarantee that I'm going to get a good shot of it. Okay, ready? It's also quieter. I'll show the difference in the pump. So this one's coming out pretty good in the middle now. So we'll see how our ounces goes. A little quicker in this machine. That's different. 
there. So you see how the shot timer being built in is really handy. So 22 seconds, I didn't have to do anything. I just started it and ended it and I got my, got my time. So it's very handy. And in this one in 22 seconds, I got, um, I couldn't see cause the camera was kind of like, I guess I got a little under. So it would have probably been about 24 seconds or so. So perfect. Like this would have been absolutely perfect. You can see the creme is really, really good. We're using Lavazza Super Crema for this. This stuff here, it's really, really good. My favorite. Um, Taste-wise, hmm. Hate to waste it. It's good, very good. So. The other thing is the pump. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but the pump is quieter. I'll try to, I wonder if I can simulate this somehow, show you what I mean. Cause you can tell, you can really hear it when there's, there's glasses. And I'll show you the difference in the pump noise on the two machines. Just rinse this all really quick. So usually I do a little cleaning afterwards. Just rinse the screen and stuff. Okay. Should probably do that on this guy too. You can kind of hear the differences in, in the pump there, but I'll I'll show you with the with the glass on it so you can hear it a little bit better. Um, because that's what I run into. So I've got these glasses here that I use a lot. They're double walled, insulated, really nice. So if I put this here, and I'll put the naked quarter filter here, <clears throat> here. So I'll try to stay in the same position each time, which is right in the center here, okay? And then that way you can kind of hear the difference. I'll get right here and I won't, all I'll do is move the levers. So here's the pump noise and how the glass rattles and stuff on the Brutus. And here it is on the 600. So the pump is a little bit quieter on the 600. I mean, it's not night and day, but it, it just feels more muted, like it's smoother a little bit. And this time it wasn't that bad. Usually if, if I put this against the back is when it might rattle. Yeah, you can hear it. I'm supposing this one will probably do the same thing. Not too much, but this one, see it kind of rattles once the glass hits it. So yeah, the pump's a little, a little noisier. Um, the Profitech pumps I did here were really, really quiet for our vibration pumps. Nothing beats a rotary pump, of course, but um, let's see what else. I think that is pretty much it. This is a solid chrome side panel. The Pro 600 has some weird black plexiglass cutout type thing, which I, I think it looks really, really cool. Um, there's a little rail on top for your cup so they don't fall off. Um, other than that, whereas this doesn't have it, like I said, the, just the, the fit, finish, and build, of course, is a little bit more expensive, but it is better. I mean, there, there's no question. Things are just, just feel a little bit better on a on, on the Profitech unit. Um, overall, I like them both. I really do. If I had a fixed budget and I couldn't go a dollar over, I'd be happy with the with with the Brutus. Um, so both of them, you can you can turn the steam boiler off, and through the PID, I think you can turn off the brew boiler, and you can turn off both boilers with with this, I believe, through the PID. Um, the gauges I kind of like up top. I don't. I, these are on the bottom. It's just a preference thing, I guess. Or did I, I like the gauges on top. You know, if they were almost here, I think it would be. If they could fit them, it would be really cool. You know, you just got to bend down to see them. It's just not as convenient as having them up top. But um, other than that, that's pretty much all I wanted to hit. So that's a quick overview of the Profitech Pro Six Hundred and kind of running against the Brutus 4, both vibration pump machines, ironically, both from Whole Latte Love, which is a, got to give them a plug. They're a, they're a great place to to buy machines from. They have a, a kind of a, 
I don't want to say a money-back guarantee. A If you're not satisfied, you can uh, trade up to a different machine. Buyer's remorse, I think they call it or something, which that's what I'm taking advantage of to trade in the Brutus for the Profitech. So that's it.